to the Akeda Project. We invite you to join. One story, many angles. Come learn with us. We are going to talk about Soren Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling. The book is an extended meditation on Genesis 22, uh, which is the book in which we find the story of the binding of Isaac, uh, or as Kierkegaard would probably call it, like the near sacrifice of Isaac. This is, this is his language. Um, and for him, it's a story uh, primar primarily about faith. That's his, that's his term. It's a story about faith, um, and it's specifically a story about the incomprehensibility of faith. This is Kierkegaard's major point, that faith is not understanding. Um, faith is not probability. Faith is not a good bet. Um, faith is fundamentally absurd, fundamentally incomprehensible. Um, and the reason this is a good story to illustrate the incomprehensibility of faith um, is not so much for Kierkegaard that, um, well, he actually writes under a pseudonym. The pseudonym is named Johannes de Silencio, but it's okay. Uh, so for this, for this author of this text, what is incomprehensible about Abraham's um, journey um, is not actually that he was willing to kill Isaac. That is not the difficult part. I mean, it, that feels like it might be what's the difficult part for most of us um, who would do such a thing. How could you know? How could you possibly? And Kierkegaard's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's hard. Yes, it's totally hard to sacrifice your child. It is hard to give up what you love. It is hard to murder somebody. These things are difficult, um, but they're not impossible. What's impossible, he says, is that part of the story, so there's the story that, so that you know, Abraham uh, mounts the ass, he, he's riding with Isaac, he's got the wood and he's got the, and Isaac says, where's the wood for the, where's the, where's the ram for the sacrifice? And he says, God will provide a ram. For the, this is all very, he climbs the mountain, he leaves Eliezer, he says, stay here, I'm taking the kid, we're going up the mountain. Difficult, 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 difficult. Um, raises the knife, very difficult. Something stops his hand. Do not touch the boy. Um, here, you see, look in the bushes. There's a there's a ram. Offer that for a sacrifice instead. That's the moment for Kierkegaard that things get really crazy in this story. When Abraham looks at the bushes, sees the ram or the lamb, however you want to translate this, and says, "Oh, sacrifices that instead." Takes Isaac down the mountain, throws him back on the horse, and has dinner with him that night and grows old with him. And like, that's the crazy part for him. Right? He's like, I understand how you could sort of train yourself up to give up the thing you love, the person you love most in the world. But I do not understand having given up all hope and all love and all security and all understand how you could then go, oh, okay, I guess God doesn't want him from me after all and receive him back and not lose your mind. Right. So that for him is what's so hard, not the giving up, but the getting back that is difficult, which is to say what's difficult, what's impossible about faith is that faith for Kierkegaard is something like expecting the impossible to happen. It seems like when Abraham went up the mountain, he was both willing to give Isaac up completely and also expecting that he was going to come back to him. And that impossibility uh, is, it sort of encapsulates for Kierkegaard the, the essence of faith. So he's responding to a like philosophical, political disaster in his mind, um, which is to say the triumph of uh, 19th century idealism in Germany and the Christianized European state uh, on the other hand, so both, both of these things at the same time. And, they, um, and what we've got is this, uh, again, philosophical, political uh, triumphalism that declares, um, whether you're a philosopher or a politician, um, that the modern European state is the pinnacle of all human existence. And that what the church is around for, it's the church, he's Christian, he's a Christian thinker, so he's primarily concerned about the church. Um, but the church is around for, what religion is around for, is to bolster the state um, and to advance state policy um, and not to cause any trouble for the state and to make sure that the state operates as smoothly as humanly possible. Um, so in Denmark, for example, which is where Kierkegaard uh, grew up, spent his entire life, never really left Copenhagen, um, never really left like the block that he lived, <laughs> really, really left his apartment in the theater. But um, for, uh, for Kierkegaard, what was troubling was if you were born into 19th century Denmark, 
it was assumed that you were a member of the Lutheran Church. You were just you were just Christians. You just you just were. And you didn't have to do anything for it. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to like sweat for it. You didn't. Um, and here was looking back through the history of say the martyrs and the saints, and he's like, oh my gosh, to be a person of faith is to be like tormented and hated and put on a rack and put right. Um, and the problem with watering down religion for Kierkegaard um, is that it gets to a point where it can't do anything but serve the state. We can't do anything but um, just sort of put a rubber stamp on the actions of the state. Um, religion for Kierkegaard, specifically Christianity, is supposed to be um, difficult, critical. It's supposed to give people a different way to live. Um, it's not just supposed to endorse uh, the way of the world as it is. So this is primarily what he was responding to. Well, let me say quickly, the, I think that the reason he goes for this fundamentally Jewish text in a Christian context um, is because he had this sense that Christianity had lost its Judaism, um, that it had gotten post Martin Luther um, to a point where it said it thought that like faith was enough. And what faith means is something like, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. And blah, 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 that, like, it's just like a profession of um, an assertion of something that happened once upon a time. Um, and so he heads back to this Jewish story to say, you know what, we have overvalued Martin Luther. Um, practice is absolutely integral. Um, practice action works are absolutely integral um, to Christian living. So it's like a, a reinfusion of Judaism into the Christian story, like back into the Christian story. Um, what I think a contemporary Jewish author, uh, Jewish um, practitioner, um, a Jewish thinker, or a person of Jewish heritage who is sort of uncomfortably aligned with that, like wherever you are, um, can take from this story. I think um, there are primarily two things. Um, the first is that I think the story asks us to reevaluate the relationship between religion and ethics. Um, are they the same thing or are they different things? Uh, Kierkegaard wants to say they're different things, right? Kierkegaard wants to say, um, there's a set of things that you owe other people, ways that we need to behave in relation to other people. We call that ethics. Um, and then there's a way that God sometimes asks you to behave and that's different. Um, somebody like Spinoza, somebody like Moses Mendelssohn would say, that's absolutely wrong. No, religion and ethics are exactly the same. All God wants from us is to love our neighbor and to serve our neighbor and to do justice. That's it. Um, so I think that the story of fear and trembling is a really helpful goad for this conversation about like, whether what um, Jewish people, Jewish practitioners, Jewish thinkers um, owe to one another and to the world is uh, the same thing as what they owe to God or if there's like some extra duty on top of it. And then if there's an extra duty on top of you, if like sometimes God sort of changes the rules, steps in and changes the rules. Um, I think what the story is telling us is you better make sure that's God. Right, you better make sure that's God. You, if God is telling you to do something that is unethical or beyond the ethical or different from the ethical, uh, you better make sure that this is God. And this is something that Kieran River wants us to take very seriously. Um, the second thing that I think um, it's helpful for in terms of uh, sort of the everydayness of Jewish life um, is its uh, revaluation of uncertainty and difficulty and perplexity. Um, the, the book opens with this fable of a young man who reads this beautiful story of Abraham and Isaac and he remembers when he was a kid and he read it and he thought it was so wonderful and he goes to read it again and he looks at it and he's like, what? This is a terrible story. And so he goes and he reads it another time. He's like, this is really terrible. And the more he reads it, Kierkegaard says, the less he understands it. And I think that there are a number of these passages, these stories in um, well, particularly in the Bible, but also in other people's scriptures as well, but particularly in the Bible, um, stories like Sodom and Gomorrah, stories like the flood, stories like that horrible thing in Judges where the Levite like dismembers his girlfriend, it's, like the bad stories. And I think what Kierkegaard is inviting us to um, do is to reread to the point of incomprehension, to reread to, to the point of rage, even outrage, uh, absurdity, um, and to uh, realize that maybe the point of these stories um, might be to provoke that kind of incomprehension and outrage, rather than trying to get ourselves into a place where we think we understand them or we think we've got them tied up. There may be a value, there may be a wisdom uh, in, in unknowing. I think that's what that's telling us. 